Good morning. Welcome to church this morning, whether you're in the building or you're on our off campus. Welcome. So good to be with you this morning to worship and to sing. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning as we start off. spring arise to heal the ground from wherever searching comes to look itself a trace of what we're looking for so be quiet now and wait the ocean Here is our King, here is our love, here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. And He is our King, He is our love, He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. said to the rose to make it unfold said to me here in my chest so be quiet now and rest the ocean is growing the tide is coming Is our King, He is our love, He is our God. Who's come, bring us back to Him. He is the One, He is Jesus, and He is our King, He is our love, He is our God. Who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the One, He is Jesus. Jesus, majesty, finally, majesty, finally, here he is our King. Our love, here is our God has come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus, and He is our King, He is our love, He is our God has come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus, He is ours, He is our King. He is our love, He is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one, He is Jesus. Oh, Majesty. How's everyone doing today? It's great to be back with y'all today in church this morning or online. Uh, it's so good to be with you. If you are new with us, whether you are in person or if you are online, please head on over to freedomkw.com slash I'm dash new and we would love to get in touch with you. Also, if you're going to be giving today, uh, we would love, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting hand signals over there. I'm not sure what they mean, but... <laughs> <laughs> But if you are going to be giving uh, with us today, 
uh, we would lo or love for you to uh, join us in that as well. So you can head on to, over to freedomkw.com slash give, and there is a bunch of options there for you uh, to do that as well. Also, uh, we have our annual business meeting, and everyone, yes, got excited for that. We have that happening on March 28th at 6 p.m. Voting is in person only, so if you would like to be a part of that, please come in for that. Uh, you can register for that as well. Uh, members, check your email for the board nominee and the resolution information as well. Also, we have Fast and Pray Days starting tonight. Uh, we have Deep Roots at 6 p.m. tonight. So if you would love to join us online, that's going to be over on our Facebook live stream as well. And finally, something that I'm incredibly excited about to announce is that today, our student leadership team over the past couple months has been working very hard, and we are going to be launching our food bank fundraiser. So... What has happened a couple of months ago, our student leadership team had gathered together and we were discussing how can we meet some needs in our community. And almost unanimously, we came to the decision that we wanted to raise money in support of the food bank because right now uh, there is a lack of donations uh, as opposed to this time last year. And so we would love to give back to them as well. And so that's enough uh, talking for me. But if you could turn your attention to the screen and some of our student leaders would like to talk about why they want to do this as well. Can take a seat. I'm doing this sort of event because I believe that this is a testament of my faith and it's one of the most impactful ways to show God's love to others. Um, Jesus was the greatest example of humility and sacrifice and we as Christians have just we've been given all of the tools necessary to follow in his footsteps and just to love others as he loved us. I am doing this fundraiser because I find that sometimes we take what we have for granted like food, water, and shelter. I'd like to give food to those who can't afford it and help them have a better life. I think that this fundraiser is really important because the pandemic has significantly reduced the amount of donations that the food bank has been receiving this year. So I think it's really important that we as a church step up in our community and help those in need right now. I think that serving is a really big part of Christianity and it's a great opportunity for us to become more like Christ and show his love to others. Through this, we hope to help the community and um, just help those who don't have as much as us. And while Jesus was on earth, he was the perfect example of a servant. So we just strive to be more like him every day. So why I'm doing the food drive um, and involved in leadership this year is um, a couple of years ago um, during Christmas, I was um, honored to be part of the group of volunteers who got to deliver um, Christmas presents and food to other kids um, and I actually got to um, either step into some of these kids homes and deliver them personally or leave it for them to find um, the next day or after that sometime um, and I think it's really important for us as a church to be investing and be involved in other people's lives that may not be as fortunate as us. All right, so our site went live last night at midnight. And so our student leaders, as well as some of our youth students, have been hard at work. They've been putting together some handmade items, some original pieces of art, and a couple of other things that we have on our site. You're going to find that over at freedomkw.com slash youth. And just scroll down, and the Food Bank fundraiser is going to be right there. There's so many things. Um, honestly, things are already flying off the shelves. I got a couple of emails this morning, and uh, requests for paintings, requests for some customized masks that are up there. And so we have some incredible items there made handmade uh, right uh, by our very own youth. And so I'm so excited for that. So if you would like to contribute to that goal, we're trying to raise $500 to provide 1,500 healthy meals uh, for families in the KW region. That would be fantastic. So please head on over to freedomkw.com slash youth. All right, if you could just turn your attention back over to the screen again, uh, we've got our next video for Lent.
It's funny how in, I'm, maybe I'm just speaking from personal experience for me, but going through uh, this Lent series with the videos and uh, through the, the Lent video reading plan and really in trying to keep my focus on what Lent is and what Christ has done to me and what's coming and what's going to happen on Easter. Man, the enemy really tries to get in there and screw things up for me. Uh, and it's it is, it's so weird because it's not like it's things that you know would seem like to be such a big deal but during this time he just knows how to just push those few buttons but then you know songs of worship you know how great the chasm <clears throat> that was between us and how high the mountains right God is there no matter how far we may feel like we've, like we moved from him. He's still, he's right here beside me. So as we sing these next couple songs this morning and as we start to prepare our hearts for, uh, for communion, um, I just want to encourage you to sing these songs out. I know they're not, you know, written by you. If they are, Phil, are you here? I don't know. Um, but they, that doesn't mean they don't have to be, per they can't be personal. They can't be your prayer. They can't be your reflection, your song to to, uh, to Christ this morning. So we ask you to stand as we sing. spoken I am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior I'm yours forever Jesus Christ my living Lord its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope and came the morning had sealed the promise your very body
Jesus, yours is the victory. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of
heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name Jesus, we, we pause in your presence and we acknowledge together that you are worthy. No one else is worthy. We can't make ourselves worthy. We can't earn any part of this, but uh, you are worthy. You are the one who is worthy to come and to sacrifice yourself for us. You are the one who is holy and perfect. And through some mystery that we can't really grasp, Somehow you've made that same holiness available to us through you. That same righteousness, that same perfection, and we can just receive it from you as a gift. And so we don't, we don't wait to have earned it because we know that we can't, but we just receive it this morning. We, we receive it again. Even if we woke up this morning with this already in our hearts, we receive it again and we thank you for it again and say, Jesus, we do take a hold of this incredible gift of forgiveness and righteousness and right standing before God that you have offered to us and we thank you for it. We're looking at you, Jesus. We're not looking at anyone else. We're not looking even at our own faults and our own sins. We're just trusting you to take care of them and to help us to walk in a way that honors you and pleases you, to living lives worthy of the calling we've received from you. So we're looking at you full in the face and invite you to speak and surprise us this morning by what you want to say. We are listening. Our hearts are soft and turn to you. And we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Amen, church. You can be seated.
I'd like to start this morning by apologizing to Pastor Ethan for not having told him what my hand signals were before we started the service this morning. That was totally on me, totally on me. I did the same thing to Pastor Aaron a few weeks ago. I will learn, it's me, I will learn. They're just like, what is, what is she doing? What does she want me to do? I don't understand. <laughs> totally me, it's me, sorry, yeah. That was great. Oh, I'm so excited. I have so many things to say. We, we, can't, we have to keep going, but let me just say, uh, youth, student leadership team, you guys, yay, every day, yay, like I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, good, good job. I'm excited about what that's gonna, what's going to happen. <sighs> God is good. I hear like, okay, if you've been in the church for like uh, over a decade, you're like, all the time. And you're like, do we still do, we still do that? Do we still do? Want to try it? If you're new to church, this is what we used to do all the time. We would say, God is good. And you would say, And then I would say all the time, and you would say, "Mm." there was a time in church life where we didn't actually get through a service without doing that several times. My name is uh, Tracy. I'm the lead pastor here. If you're new with us this morning, we're so glad you are with us. Hey, off campus, thanks for being with us. Uh, We are going, I'm going to start our new series. We are going to uh, go into a time of communion, and then we have a testimony and a prayer time. So if you have a prayer request this morning, we are, uh, we're going to name them out loud Today, we're going to do it a little differently than we did last month, but I just want you to know that there will be an opportunity for you at the end of the service to just let people know what it is that you'd like prayer for um, in here on campus or off campus, and uh, we're going to make that available to us because it's Communion Sunday, and that's how we roll in Communion Sunday, and it's so beautiful, so I'm excited. So something strange happens to me during the Olympics. Is anybody, isn't anybody sad that we didn't, we missed an Olympics last year? I hope it goes forward this year. Um, something happens to me, though, during the Olympics. I become a sports junkie. Does this happen to anybody else? Like, I, I will watch sports that I don't know anything about and have, uh, don't know any of the athletes in, and I will just sit and watch them obsessively. I will set up the live stream from CBC on my iPad or my laptop and just carry it with me for dishes and carry it with me when I'm folding laundry, carry it with me everywhere and, and watch. Like, I... I don't know, there's just something about the Olympic Games that has me caring about sports like, no, biathlon. That's a weird one. Rowing. When do you ever watch rowing ever in your life? Um, or like, whatever, curling. Curling is fun, actually, but I don't ever watch it unless it's on the Olympics. Um, what else? Some of you, it's like, or like, <laughs> figure skating I would watch. But speed skating? Like, who's, who's seeing this outside of every four years? And so, but I get obsessed with it. I like, I care about these athletes. I get involved in their story. Um, and I, I, I don't any other time of the year. And so I still, I know, we, I, I don't know we don't do this anymore, but every time I think about the Olympics, I'm like, I believe in the power that comes when the world comes together as one. Do you remember? I, I believe, I believe together we'll fly. I believe in the power of you and I. Best theme song ever. That was 2010, right? Vancouver. Uh, That was just, like, I still go there in my heart. I love the Olympics so much. (laughs) I still sing that sometimes. Everyone's like, I'm leaving. Just a great anthem, always. And I remember uh, in 2016, the Olympics, the Summer Olympics were in Rio. And uh, I was, uh, CBC, I think it was CBC was covering it that year. And uh, they were highlighting the usual suspects for the Summer Olympics, which are the, the, the running track events, right? Um, and I was watching this, and then all of a sudden, the, <laughs> there was, it seemed like a bit of a like, kerfluffle happened on, on the live stream. And all of a sudden, they quickly turned their attention to the high jump, which was in its final moments, like in its like, last three contestants. Contestants? That's not a thing in the Olympics, is it? Athletes, whatever. Um, and they, they were in the last three. So the, the, the medal, the, like, it was just like, who's going to get what medal? And they suddenly were there because they realized there was a Canadian, Derek Druin, who was going to get a medal. And so, the, you know, they were following all these other events and talking about athletes from all over the world. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, and this Canadian guy is about to win a medal in high jump. Did you ever remember this? And so, so you're like, no, exactly, because nobody watches high jump. <laughs> And so this is what happened on the live stream, too. And the, uh, the feed I was watching, like, there was no lead up to it. They hadn't been telling the story of Derek Druin or any of those, like, you know, Adelie, like, kind of, like, things they do, those profiles they do. And um, it just was over to high jump. And then there was a bunch of fumbling from the commentary, from the commentary, uh, commentators who were saying, like, oh, yeah, uh, Derek, yeah, J- Derek Druin from uh, Karuna, Ontario. And he's, um, 
oh, he was the, he's actually the 2015 world champion. And so we obviously expected him to medal in these Olympics and whatever. It was just like they were fumbling. And, and honestly, guys, like the Summer Olympics are not Canada's best best. You know what I'm saying? And so the fact that we had a medal contender this whole time, but nobody was paying any attention, or at least, at least it's what it seemed like. I'm sure they would deny that that's, but that's how it seemed to, to me as a viewer. And so that's why it made such an uh, impression on me that this was going on. Like, why were they, why were they taken by surprise? Like, how, how had they never heard of this amazing athlete who just won the gold medal, right? Come on, Derek, yeah! What a fun event, right? Like, 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 okay, like, what just happened? So after a few minutes of this, the commentators started to pronounce the word Corona, his hometown, properly. I know this because I grew up near there. So when they said Karuna, I was like, <laughs> you guys are taken by surprise. Uh, so they all of a sudden started saying Karuna correctly. The commentary changed. Oh, yes, he's always been a metal hopeful. We've just had our eye on Derek this whole time. But this left an impression on me. And so... We were busy because what happened is that we were busy at the time. We, collectively watching this, were watching those high-profile, big-ticket events that everyone comes to see. This was the Olympics where, remember the Canadian um, Andre de Grasse, I think his name is pronounced, and Usain Bolt from Jamaica? They were going to this men's 200 semifinal. They went across the finish line and, like, were smirking at each other. In the remember this one? Like, this was, like, all the rage. Does nobody watch the Olympics except for me? <laughs> I'm just, like, nerding out by myself here. That's okay. But we were watching these kind of high-ticket, high-profile uh, things, but Derek was over there quietly winning a gold medal from the other side of the arena. This is so interesting to me. And I think about this actually all the time, and it's going to help us this morning to sort of frame where I want to go in the scriptures, uh, surprisingly, but true, is that some, I just was reminded that some of the best things in life are happening under the radar in unexpected ways. It's not always the place you expect it. It's not always the forefront of what's going on. It's not always the loudest voice. What we give our attention to might actually not be what is important. It might just actually happen to be the loudest or the closest. And so that's the journey I want to take with you in this series. Uh, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah. And I want us to hear what was prophesied about Jesus uh, by Isaiah 700 years before Jesus was born. And then we're going to go forward into Jesus' life and death and resurrection, uh, which confirmed who he was. And we're going to reintroduce ourselves to the surprising, under-the-radar, gentle but powerful one who is called the Messiah and what that means for us. So the question we are asking all series long is, so who is Jesus? So listen, if you've known Jesus for many years, I want to welcome you to this series and invite you to the, the wonder and the awe and the mystery again in like new and refreshing ways. That's what I'm praying for you. And if you've never met Jesus before or you're exploring who he is, uh, don't just like, welcome. Don't be nervous to ask your questions and uh, open your heart and, and see what you might find out about who he is. So in the book of Isaiah, there are four uh, sections or passages that are referred to as servant songs. And um, there's one in Isaiah 42, one in Isaiah 49, one in Isaiah 50. And the one we're going to be looking at for the whole se this whole series, Isaiah, Isaiah 52, uh, 13, to Isaiah 53, 12, which is the fourth of the servant songs. And what's interesting about these four servant songs, the reason we think they're interesting is because scholars have concluded that they are genuine and indeed have been inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that's why they're included in Scripture because they are so opposed to the Jewish idea of the Messiah. Because they're so different than what the Jews were looking for, especially 700 years before Jesus came. They were so opposed to what the Jews were thinking of uh, who was going to be their Messiah, that without God inspiring these passages, they never would have been written. And let alone stood the test of time to be in our hands today. And so we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 52. You can do this in the YouVersion app. Um, uh, under events and then mm, more and then events and then you can follow along you can find us there Isaiah 52 chapter uh, verses 13 to 15 is where we're going to be I think I put my bookmark in here yep there it is all right take a listen to what Isaiah prophesied in this fourth servant song 700 years before Jesus was born 
See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see. And what they have not heard, they will understand. Interesting, eh? And we're going to go through this whole passage. So if you're looking at your, at your scriptures there, it'll say the suffering and glory of the servant. We're going to take this passage by passage all through the month of March as we get ready for Easter. So we can see already in the scripture as we read it that the servant that's being talked about here is already a surprising success. Because in verse 13, the praise he receives, verse 14, comes from his suffering, which verse 15 has worldwide consequences. His praise comes from suffering, which has worldwide consequences, not the events that you would think would be taking place here looking for a Messiah. And so the stage is set by Isaiah um, with a mystery. How can someone who is exalted, how could that happen coming out of suffering? And how can suffering lead to the whole world benefiting and acknowledging who he is? And we're going to get to the answer uh, in, the, in the coming weeks, of course, but I'll just give you a little, just a little teaser trailer. And the answer, of course, is that because the suffering that he endured was because he needed to bear our sin. And so that's, that's coming up. But for this morning, there's this mystery that's like, how, how does someone become exalted who is coming from this place of suffering? And how does suffering produce such incredible worldwide consequences? So our question is, who is Jesus? This is Jesus, the one who surprised the ones who were looking for him. Let me say that again. This is Jesus. He's the one who surprised the ones who were already looking for him. Verse 14 says that um, they were appalled. Many were appalled at him. It's a very strong Hebrew word meaning like shocked or shattered when they saw him. Because Jesus, uh, in a few verses we're going to read Isaiah 53 too, Jesus was not attractive by any human standards. Um, In in his death, he was so badly beaten that he was unrecognizable as human, it says. And so how can this kind of torture and sacrifice that we read about here and then we see lived out in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, how can any of that be anything but utter defeat, right? Like you have to understand that. We're kind of used to the story, but looking at it from this perspective really does shift your thinking. And then in verse 15, uh, uh, in the NIV it says, he will sprinkle many nations. And so the idea of sprinkling has to do with a cleansing. You think about the, uh, the Old Testament when they would sacrifice animals and sprinkle blood on the altar, sprinkle blood on different garments or different things they were trying to make holy. That's the, that's the reference here. But almost certainly, and in the Hebrew, this is weird to us in the English, I know, but in the Hebrew, that word sprinkle also means startle. So depending on, I guess English is weird too. We have words that are exactly the same, but they mean two different things depending on context. So the NIV, the new NIV here has um, translated it sprinkle, but almost certainly if you're looking in your Bible, who's all like keen or looking in their Bible right now? It almost certainly has an asterisk or some kind of a note and other translations will actually use the word startle or um, something like the, the many nations will be amazed at him is the more common reference there. So so we'll take, it, we'll take it understanding that Jesus certainly did sprinkle the nations with his sacrifice as far as a cleansing and atoning and all of those things. But let's look at it from the, from the other translation of this Hebrew word that, uh, in fact, many nations will be amazed at him or startled by him or surprised. It says that kings will shut their mouths because of him. They were... Kings, like the most powerful people in the world, were dumbfounded when they understood who he was. So this probably has two, we don't know exactly, but it could have two different references. First of all, kings were dumbfounded because we saw this in the life of Jesus. Because when um, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judah, 
uh, Jesus was brought to him. You might remember this, this part of the story. Uh, what, did, what did Pilate do when he was asked to, uh, to judge Jesus and to put him to death? What did he do? He didn't say anything, did he? He washed his hands of it and said, okay, fine, but I'm not, I don't want any responsibility for him. He shut his mouth when it came to Jesus. And even when Jesus was brought to King Herod, um, also to be questioned, uh, King Herod was perplexed by Jesus, Scripture says in Luke chapter 9. And ultimately, he chose not to, to render judgment. He just chose to send him away and let it be somebody else's problem. So kings shut their mouths because of him. We saw that in his life. But also when we think about uh, people being in shock and awe when they were looking at Jesus and, and understanding who he is, we certainly are also looking to the future, right? Because the, the, it points to a time when everything is revealed for what it really is, and Jesus is revealed for who he truly is. And then a, a new truth that was unheard of and is now seen and understood by everyone, even if they didn't acknowledge who he was in their lifetime. And there will be those who look at Jesus when all things are finally revealed and they'll be appalled that they misjudged him so badly. This is what the scripture is pointing to, realizing that they made a mistake by discounting him because he wasn't what they expected. He didn't look the way they thought, didn't act the way that they thought he would. And they're gonna realize how badly they misjudged. So who is Jesus? This is Jesus, the one who surprised not just the ones who were looking for him, the one who surprised even the greatest on earth, even kings were, are, are in awe when they look at him, startled, surprised, dumbfounded. He didn't come in the way that those who were looking for him expected. He didn't come in the way that those who were in power thought that he should. He didn't act in a way that every other leader before him acted. He didn't put himself on display in that same way. Verse 13 here in Isaiah says, My servant will act wisely. My servant will act wisely. To act wisely means to, to know exactly what to do in every situation. Intelligent action. Not just intelligent being or thinking, but intelligent Action. So Jesus didn't just say the right words. He didn't just gather the right crowd. Or he was, certainly wasn't born into the right family according to what tradition would say. He did the right thing. Again and again and again. It didn't matter what people expected him to say. He said what was right. It didn't matter what people expected him to do. He did what was right. It didn't matter what anyone else thought was right or told him what was right or how to act or how to look or how to think or how to lead. He did what was right before God every single time. So it's no wonder he surprised everyone. And he's still surprising people today. When they saw who Jesus really is, they saw his suffering and his glory, his suffering leading to his glory. What else was there to say? They would they shut their mouths because of him. And so as Isaiah sets this up in his 700-year uh, pre-Jesus prophecy about him, we see that this is Jesus. We see that this is the one who still surprises us 2,000 years later. And so the question for us today is, what if he's not what we expect? Just like those who were looking for him were surprised by what they saw or refused to see what was in front of them because it wasn't what they expected. Or just like the greatest that were the ruling, the kings and their kingdoms and all of those things, even, even they were dumbfounded and shut their mouths because of him because they were, he was not what they, they didn't know what to do with him. So for us today, what if he's not what we expect in our lives on a Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., whatever? Are we looking for him to be someone that he's not? Are we looking away from the things that he truly is? And my, I really, I want to ask myself this, and I have been. I had the advantage of writing this a long time ago. So you know I've been having the advantage of thinking about it. But I want to ask you what I've been asking myself. A 
Are you open to still being surprised by Jesus? I love this about Jesus. Maybe you've heard me talk about this before. That same thing that was prophesied about him 700 years before he came is still happening today. His ability to, to I call it sometimes, choose the third option. The surprising, the surprise ending, the surprise wisdom, the surprise out of left field thing that makes the most perfect sense. When Jesus was brought the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8, he surprised them with his response. I, 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 don't, I, I'm not, I can't have time to tell you all of these stories, so just like maybe mark these down if you're interested. When Jesus was asked if people should pay taxes to Caesar in Matthew 22, he surprised them again with his answer. When Jesus, when they, when they tried to trap him, and I said it, <laughs> I'll say how I wrote it. When they tried to tra trap Jesus into being canceled, he flipped the script. <laughs> That's literally what they did. <laughs> he flipped the script and tried, and, and, uh, and he surprised them again. That's Matthew 21. You can read about that. He, he always had the perfect response, the perfect action, and it surprised everyone around him. And so I start looking at my own life, and, I, and I think, I'm thinking about this. When I, was, when I was looking to make myself enough, to be good enough to prove my own worth, he came and he pointed me to the cross. And he said, I'm enough. I'm already enough. That's, that's what you need. When I was desperate for an answer to my prayer, he came and he answered me in a way that took longer and was not what I said I wanted, but was exactly the thing that I needed. And when I was so disappointed with myself and failing again and repeating the same mistakes again, finding myself back at the beginning again, I expected to see disappointment on his face. So I kept my head down and I tried to do better. And then he came and he lifted my head and he stood me up and he gave me purpose and hope. And it came from the unreasonable love that I found in him, in his word, and what I felt in my heart, and what I heard in my mind that he would say to me. He lifted my head and gave me something I, I didn't even know to ask for or to, to hope for, and I was surprised again by him. And probably this is the best one, maybe the most succinct by given to us by the Apostle Paul in Romans 5.8. That when I was still a sinner, that God demonstrated his love for me by sending Christ to die for my sins. Who does that? You may, you may think that Jesus is one thing or another. You may think he's a myth. You may picture him standing over you in judgment or disappointment. You may think he's a soft-spoken moral teacher. Maybe he's, to you, someone that your grandma thinks is great, but you don't think we need that crutch anymore. But I wonder, whether you've met him before or not, I still wonder, are you open today to being surprised by him again? Because he's so many things. He's everything that you need. And we're going to talk more and more this month about, uh, in this series, about all uh, about these things. We can't talk about everything, but a few more incredible things about who Jesus is. But um, as we start this series, I want to invite you, uh, we're going to go into a time of communion. And I want to invite you as we come right back to that pivotal moment that we celebrate the death of Christ. We remember it and we think about what comes after it, but what it all means for us. I want to invite you. To let him speak to your heart and maybe surprise you with something he wants to change in you or to say to you or to speak to you. Maybe he wants to show you a new picture of who he really is. Maybe you've had in your mind that he only does this or he only does that or he feels this way about you or he feels that way about you. And he wants to change your mind. Are you open to that this morning? Rob, I'm going to invite you and Antalita to come.
Who is Jesus? This is Jesus, the one who surprised the ones who were looking for him. He was the one who surprised the greatest on earth, and he is the one who surprises us 2,000 years later. And I'm inviting Jesus to do that in my life. I try to do this every Easter in some way, shape, or form, and I just want to invite you on the journey which says, I know this Easter story, I've heard it. Even if you're not a churchgoer uh, consistently, you probably understood a little bit about what happens on Easter weekend. But I want to see Jesus more. more. I, want, I want to understand him more deeply. I, I want him to be able to point out something in my life that needs to be um, brought into alignment with who he really is. I, I want to know what he would say. I want to be surprised by him again. He's the one who came in a way that was not what anyone expected, but was exactly what we needed. And so we come to the Lord's table this morning again, as is our tradition on the first Sunday of the month. And I'm not going to read to you from uh, 1 Corinthians 11 this morning. We're going to be in the book of Matthew and read uh, Matthew's gospel account of the Last Supper. But one of the things that we, we always do um, be, according to the instructions in 1 Corinthians 11 is to just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. We don't want to ever come to this table, to this, to this um, ordinance with anything but the most, uh, utmost respect. And so, and, and we don't want to come in an unworthy manner, 1 Corinthians 11 says. And so I want to invite you to pause and just think about um, anything that would be in your life that you would want to confess. Make your heart right before Jesus. If you're at home, this is the time to make sure you have those, that juice and those crackers. You can run and get that if you haven't done that yet. Any kind of juice, any kind of bread or crackers is, of course, fine as we celebrate symbolically what Jesus has done for us. So let's just take a minute and invite the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, to speak to, our, to us and say, uh, remind us of anything that we need to be forgiven for, to ask forgiveness for, I should say, and, and then be forgiven for. So let's take a moment of pause. Jesus, as your people, we don't ever want to come to the, this table, take these emblems symbolically together without really realizing what it is that we're doing, without being able to pause and say, I, I don't want to come flippantly. I don't want familiarity to breed contempt here. I, I want to make sure that my heart is aligned with the heart of God, that my heart is uh, holy and righteous because I've received those things from Christ who provided them for me. And so we confess our sin to you this morning. We ask forgiveness for all of the ways that we have gone against the things that you have called us to, the things that are, make it so that we are not right with you, the sin in our lives that needs to be removed. And we thank you that when we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for that word. We receive that together so that we would come into this place in a way that honors you and so that we can very clearly hear how you would want to speak to us individually and how you might want to reframe our thinking, but we, we don't want all this garbage built up in our lives, so we, we, we well, confess it we ask forgiveness and we determine um, with the help of the Spirit to walk a new way, away from those things. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm in Matthew chapter 26. The Gospel of Matthew gives an account of the Last Supper verse 26 here it says while they were eating Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body 
So let's eat the bread together and remember the sacrifice of Jesus' body on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. Just pausing in this moment to go back to Isaiah 52, to be reminded that his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. That's the sacrifice of Jesus' body on the cross for us. Then Jesus took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's drink the cup together and be thankful for the forgiveness of sins. for worship come for life I come for peace I come before you on my knees Lord hear my cry you're all I need oh God I come to the cross My debts have all been paid. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And here my sins have washed away. And here my soul has found its place at the foot of the cross. I once was lost, but now I'm found. My chains fall to the ground. Take my life, I lay it down at the foot of the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to invite you now, um, if you have a prayer request. Pastor Aaron is on the live stream with you. If you have a prayer request or in the room, we're going to invite you to share those in just a moment. But when we consider all of these things, um, the, the question we, we're going to be asking, like I said, all month is, is who is Jesus? Who is he to you? I want to invite you, you're going to see on our socials this week, I want to invite you to share that story. Uh, we want to, we're going to do like a hashtag. I don't know if I've even started that yet, but like, a, like do a, and we want to be able to tell that story so we can find it. And I don't, I want you to consider that. We have all month to do this together, but um, I can't tell you how often people go, ah, I don't want to share. And then when you hear somebody else share, you're like, that was so encouraging, right? <laughs> but let's do that together this month. Let's tell one another and anybody who could listen on our social feeds or anything else, and we're going to share some on Sundays, um, we're going to share them on our socials, whatever, and get the word out. And, and I want you to just consider now how you might answer the question, uh, who is Jesus to you? Who has he been to you? How is he working in your life? Maybe the hashtag, I think the hashtag is, so this is Jesus. So this is Jesus. Um, I'm going to invite Lorinda to come. Um, Lorinda called me this week and you can just stay six feet away from me over here <laughs> that's how we how we set it up you can take it off yeah yeah and then Matt wants you to move a little closer to me so that we can so that our off-campus family can see you there you go uh, so Lorinda last week we got a prayer request at the last minute about your brother who had basically was having organ failure. Yes. They didn't know what was going on. That's right. And we prayed on Sunday morning, not really having details, just like Pastor Ethan came up and we just got a note and we're like, just pray for Perry. Right. And uh, he did. 
And then I think it was Monday you called me. Was it Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday you called me. Uh, tell me what happened. I mean, I know. Tell them what happened. <laughs> um, on Saturday, I was trying to reach my brother, and I had started about 11.30, the first phone call, no response. Mid-afternoon, tried again, no response. Uh, supper time, tried again, no response. So I called my sister, and I said, Angie, I can't reach Perry today. I've been trying all day, and could you go over and check on him? He's got some serious medical issues. He's got a heart condition. He's uh, diabetic with other problems. So she went, or Sean went over to check on him and found him on the floor in his bedroom. He had got up in the morning and fell and couldn't get up. Mm. So he had been there all day until about 6.30 when Angie found them. They took him to the hospital. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know his address. He didn't know who she was, mm -hmm. didn't, didn't know anything. His memory was pretty, pretty vague. So they took him to the hospital. Um, I'll, I'll run to 3.30 in the morning. Angie got a call from the doctor at the hospital and said, this is not looking good. This is not as simple as giving him antibiotics and clearing up the infection, the infection in his leg. So he's at a toe amputated because of infection, and he's had this issue with this wound closing, and the infection now was to his knee. So the, in the conversation with the doctor, he said, this is not looking good. He's showing signs of kidney failure, and um, there's some serious things happening here. And they wanted to know if there was, if he had a resuscitation order on, and Angie couldn't answer that. She said, I'll, I'll have to get in touch with my sister because I'm not really sure. Um, so she called me and in turn looking, looking for his will, looking for his power of attorney and all that stuff to get that in place. I was struggling to find it. I couldn't find anything for some reason. I was struggling. Sunday morning, I got up at six o'clock and I was sitting at the dining room table going through some papers where I thought, well, I'm sure I had it out and looking for it and I, again. So I stumbled up on some documents for my mom and I found a book that I had been writing in because my mom is not well and she's, that's a whole other story, but I stumbled up on a book that I had been keeping track of things in and it fell open to a scripture verse that I had written down when I was going through things with my mom, and it said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yes, Lord, you got this. Yeah, that's right. You got this. And I just prayed. It wasn't a big, crazy, long, wordy prayer. It was, Lord, he's your child. Mm -hmm. You love him, give him another chance. Mm -hmm. Give him another chance. Bring him back to us so he can find you. Right. So Monday we talked. Yes. And yes. you were making, having to make decisions about what yes. would happen with his care. Yes. And it was, this is end of life discussions that you yes. were having. And uh, it was pretty heavy. We prayed. Yep. Very heavy. Kept praying that there yep. would be peace. That, that beautiful, yeah. I didn't yeah. know about that part, but that's yeah. how we prayed. That there would be peace. Yeah. And then Joe called me on Tuesday morning, because it's all of Monday. It was, okay, yes. this is, what are we going to do? What are we going to decide? Yeah, that's right. And then on Tuesday, uh, we talked to you. Well, Joe, Joe called me. I got a text message or something before Sorry. staff. I think it was a text. Yeah. Love 2021. Oh, yeah, this is what's happening, guys. Um, so yeah. what happened on Tuesday morning? So I'll back up a little bit yeah. before Tuesday. And Monday, Monday morning. Oh, you got me. Maybe it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday morning, my sister got a call from the hospital, and she, the nurse said to her, she said, I, I'm really concerned Perry has given up. And she said he, he won't get out of bed. He won't try to get out of bed. He won't for no reason. So she said, I think 
you probably should come in later today so you can meet with the doctor and meet with, you know, it's, it's just not looking good here this morning. So, and make some decisions. So that was fine. Angie and I talked and she said, um, when I go in, I'm gonna Skype you so that you can be there for the conversation because we had made the decision because even though I was his power of attorney or whatever, because I have my mom, yep. right? Yep. It was wise for me not to go into the hospital that she would do it because she works there, she's there all the time. So she would do that part. So she, so she did, and, but not until a little bit later, she decided to go in early and she walked in the room and she looked at my brother and she thought, this is not the person that the nurse described to me. What's going on here? He's all perked up and he's, the swelling had gone down in his face and it was just, she couldn't answer it. Right. It was, she didn't know what to think and she sat to speak with him and he seemed to be fine. He was doing really well. And the doctor came in, I'm on the phone. She looked at his leg. She looked at Perry. She said, um, I don't know what to say here. What's going on? <laughs> the infection had gone down drastically mm -hmm. in his leg, drastically. And she said to Angie, she said, in the course of my career, I have never seen this. I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what to say. She said, I guess the treatment going forward now is how did you get here so we can prevent this from happening again? <laughs> that was her words. She, she had no explanation for it, but I did. Yeah, that's right. I did. Yeah. I said to my brother, I said, this is the hand of God. This is exactly what God does. I choose to believe that. And you know what? The Lord is, Jesus has really been challenging me lately on prayer. Mm. Really been challenging me in a sense that how many times do I say, per, say to people, I'm praying for you? Am I praying? Mm -hmm. How am I praying? What am I praying for? What's my attitude when I go into prayer? Yeah. Yep. Jesus changes lives. Yeah, that's right. He heals. Yeah. He does. Do we believe it? Do we pray like we believe it? Yeah. That's what I've been challenged on. I'm speaking to me now. Yeah. Because this is where, where I've, I've been over the last few months. Yeah, it's good. And I'm just, this is not a coincidence. This is no coincidence. People can say that. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. But I know it was the hand of God giving him another chance. Yeah, that's so good. Yes. Giving him another chance. Yes. Thank you, Lorinda. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'll take a prayer. Actually, can you give that to Pastor Ethan? Isn't that so great? And so uh, it was a difficult, obviously such a difficult few days for Lorinda and Joe and their family as they were walking through that. But then when Lorinda and I talked, I think it must have been Tuesday afternoon, we, we had a chance to actually connect. And I said, and it wasn't even about Perry anymore. It was like, oh, Perry and I had this discussion and we were talking about this other difficult thing happening in our family. And I was just telling him on Skype, I was like, you know what? We don't carry that anymore. We've given that to Jesus and he is taking care of it and he's going to redeem all the time that we've lost in this relationship and it's taken care of. So you don't need to carry that. And I was like, whoa. Yep, I said, what did I say? Thou preach. Thou preach, Lorinda. That was like, that's the same story. It's in the same timeline. Like looking at all of the things that Jesus does. And we were laughing because I was talking about being surprised by Jesus. And we need not be surprised by healing. But we're amazed. <laughs> we're amazed at what he can do. So if you have prayer requests this morning, we do want to take a minute to acknowledge them. Um, uh, Rob, you can, you can play us through this because it helps me in my spirit. Like David playing the harp or something. Um, and then... Um, <laughs> Can you just see Rob at home? <laughs> let's do, let's do, I'm getting him a harp for his birthday. That's not important now, you guys. It's not, it's not what we're talking about. Sometimes my imagination. So.
so, so if you have a prayer request, um, do you have some you're going to read, Pastor Aaron? We have one? Yeah. Just throw it in the comments on the live stream. If you have one in the room, you don't have to go into great detail. You can even just tell us, yeah, I have a prayer request. Um, and we're going to collect them up, and then we're going to pause over them in prayer together. So, Pastor Aaron, you can come. Do you need a stand? You wouldn't mind one, probably? Hi. Hi. Thanks for hosting our, our off-campus family today. Oh, I today. like our off-campus. They're lovely. I have one. Do you want me to read the one, or do you want to wait a minute? What, read the one. What one? All right. Uh, this is from Christine. This one I can actually do by heart. Uh, Christine had... Um, a biopsy done a few weeks ago and she's been waiting for the results and she heard from the doctor this week and it's been to two pathologists and they can't figure out what it is and it's on its way to a third pathologist in Hamilton and uh, when I was on the phone with Christine this week she just said dear God please just let it not be cancer yeah. Yeah. so yeah. that is that prayer request yeah. she's walked through that yeah Yeah. yeah. and in, in the room do we have prayer requests Pastor Ethan has a microphone there too and, and off campus, I know you're a few seconds behind us here, but Pastor Aaron's going to uh, read a few more out as they come in. Anyone else in the room want to share? You or if you want to share it in the comments on the live stream from your phone, you're welcome to do that too. Because we have hybrid church, guys. We can, we can do that. Anybody in the room? The powerful thing is that, guys, when we pray, when you, when you bring your requests to the body of Christ, you're not alone in that anymore. You're not alone in that anymore. Um, you don't have to feel like you have to carry burdens alone. That's, that was never how it was intended to be. Adam's asking for prayer for a friend that's struggling through this COVID season. Yeah. Does anybody in the room have somebody who they would say, somebody in my life is really struggling in, in the midst of this pandemic right now, like specifically related to isolation and depression or mental health issues? Uh, maybe job loss. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of a lot of that. That's really heavy and real for a lot of people. Any prayer requests in the room? Anything else, Pastor? Why don't we stand together, church? Off campus, if you're uh, with us uh, in your living room or wherever you are, why don't you also stand with us? Uh, we're just going to change our posture. Um, and, and kind of come to attention here together. And I want to just ask the Holy Spirit, there's a, a couple of prayer requests we've read this morning. I want to just invite you to just quietly pray. We're not going to, we're just going to pause a minute and however you're led to pray, I want you to pray right now for whatever one of those requests or all of them that come to your mind. So just go ahead and, and take a moment in prayer right now. Jesus, you are able. Jesus, you are present. You are able to surprise us with the answer. You're able to meet us in every circumstance. Lord Jesus, we invite your presence into every heart and every home. Every person that we're thinking about who wasn't mentioned this morning and, and all of these needs that we've heard about today. We invite you into those spaces. We know you're already there, but we pray for you to make yourself known to every person who needs to know uh, an answer to a prayer or to, to be the recipient of a miracle. Like Christine, there are others who are awaiting test results and it's very stressful and they're trying so much to trust you and to be at peace, but that eludes them so often. And so I ask uh, Jesus that you would come and bring your peace. You said it, it passes all understanding. So that it doesn't make sense in the moment, doesn't make sense in the circumstance, but somehow you bring peace when we give our anxiety and our cares and we bring our prayers and petitions to you. That's what you said you would do. And so we do that together. 
We pray for every person in our minds and hearts who have really been affected this season. It's been a difficult, difficult winter. Those who are still struggling with job loss and, and mental health issues, and there are uh, some, just a variety of relational issues that have been going on in this last year. Lord Jesus, come and, and bring hope and light and life. Use us in those situations however you want to. We are totally open to being used as, as, as speakers and, and givers of hope and freedom and life um, that's found in you. We don't always know what to say, but we always trust you with the words to say. So we put ourselves, uh, make ourselves available. Here am I, God, send me. Here am I, send me into this neighborhood, into this family, into this person's life, like whatever. Send me, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Perry's life. We thank you for the miracle that astounds the doctors. Sounds so much like Isaiah 52, that you're still surprising people by what you are able to do, by who you are, by how you interact and intervene in the, in the most hopeless of situations. So we praise you, Jesus. We praise you for your body and your blood. We thank you that you, by your stripes, we are healed, both in a physical way and, and more importantly for eternity, a spiritual way. All of us can be healed because of what you've done for us. We thank you, Jesus. And we just ask that you would help us. We need so much help to be able to keep our minds and hearts focused on who you are trusting you for the outcome and giving you our lives every day. Lord, I pray as we close this morning for any person who is searching for you and can hear my voice, I pray that you would draw them to yourself. I pray that you would help them to hear you, to see you, and to understand more and more about who you really are. I pray that they would, they would have the courage to ask the questions and to reach out for help and to reach out for uh, for a conversation to find out more. And we thank you for all that you've given us and who you are. And church, this communion Sunday morning, let's, let's conclude together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, church. Can't wait to see you again next week as we continue in our series. And don't forget, think about how you might answer that hashtag, so this is Jesus. Looking forward to that too. See you soon.